Hey, horse racing fans, welcome to a special episode of Bourbon and Horses going into the Kentucky Derby uh, for Saturday, May 1st at Churchill Downs. Going to be going through races six till the end of the card, um, capping it off with the Kentucky Derby, giving you my top picks and long shots for each race. Uh, going to be drinking some American bourbon, um, kind of my go to bourbon as I'm, I've been doing these videos. Um, so make sure you uh, grab you some whiskey and bourbon as you watch the Kentucky Derby on Saturday and hopefully you win lots of money. So kicking it off with race six going a mile in the turf at Longans, Churchill, Distaff, Turf Mile, a grade two stakes race for 500000 My top pick in here um, is going to be <clears throat> number five, Got Stormy, 8-5 to five morning line favorite for Tyler Gaffleone and Mark Cassie. The horse is 27-11 lifetime, earning over $2 million. Um, big win last time out in the Honey Fox, a grade three, going a mile um, down at Gulfstream Park. Beat out my second selection in here is a Fell um, with Arad Ortiz and Brandon Walsh. A um, little bit lighter raced horse, 16-5 uh, and five lifetime. Um, finished second in the Honey Fox last time out. Uh, first time before that in the Marshall Rivers, grade three at Gulfstream Park with Tyler Gaffley on the board. So Tyler G bouncing off as a fell, going back to Got Stormy um, to kick off this leg of a great Kentucky Derby Stakes card. And my long shot pick is going to be number number seven of Scon with Joel Rosario and Ed Kennedy. Lighter race horse, only raced eight eight times, winning two of those, but definitely stepping up here in class. Um, has had both uh, Tyler and Arad Ortiz on this horse, and it's finished in the money. Um, but definitely a big step up in class and maybe a, a decent prize to use in an exacta or a trifecta um, if that's your wagering style there. Going on to race seven, we have seven furlongs, the Derby City Distaff, um, sponsored by Kendall Jackson Winery. It's a grade one stakes race for 500000 Um My top pick in here... And I believe top pick is going to be in most. It's going to be number four, one to five morning line favorite. Gamine for Johnny Velasquez and Bob Baffert. Um, one loss um, in her lifetime, <clears throat> getting beat out by She Dares the Devil uh, back in the Kentucky Oaks this time last year um, and has won six other times since. Um, so definitely the horse to beat and going to be tough to beat. So if you're using a single, this is the race to use the single mean if you try to beat her if i try to beat her i'm going to go with two scones in um with Arad and three bells the one for cory lanieri uh tall order in here coming in here trying to beat you mean uh really not much probably going to be pricey wise um so this is just a race that you can just single it maybe do an exacta <clears throat> use unique factor who is my long shot with joel rosario and peter miller uh, but the horse is a tough task. Stepping up here in class, just got a long way to go. Not sure if it's going to be able to do it. Like I said, just trying to get some type of exacta um, with a decent price underneath. But with 1 to 5 on Gamine, probably even lower than that come post time. It's going to be difficult. Here we go, kicking off the pick 5 that um, will conclude with the Kentucky Derby. We're going a mile on the dirt, the Pat Day Mile. Presented by LG and E and KU, Grade Two Stakes Race for five hundred thousand. Um, a great race in here. You have Jackie's Warrior, who is my second pick, with Joel Rosario for Steve Asmussen. Uh, six and four lifetime. The horse is definitely a better at a mile. I think we kind of figured that out, or under a mile, um, as this horse was prepping towards the Kentucky Derby, and it looked to be a, a good favorite going in, and then kind of struggled going a mile on the sixteenth, getting beat out by Essential Quality. And all the connections are saying this horse is better at the shorter distances. So this is a test here going back to a mile to see if that shorter distance will benefit the horse. I'm also going to use number five prevalence here. Uh, top My top pick in this race for Go Dolphin, uh, Tyler Gaffleone and Brandon Walsh. Three and two lifetime, uh, two wins. Uh, the last win was an optional claiming race for 75000 along with its maiden. Um, at Gulfstream Park. Did get beat out in the Wood Memorial by Bourbonic. Big long shot Bourbonic there. Um, a lot of people thought this horse could have been, could have made a run for the Kentucky Derby. 
Um, but after the wood, they decided, nope, we're going to shorten it up. The horse maybe prefers that mile distance. And we're going to aim it here to the Pat Day Mile. Third pick, Dream Shake, another Kentucky Derby contender um, that got beat out by Rock Your World in the Santa Anita Derby. Got beat out by Life is Good in the San Felipe. Um, going back to a mile here to see if that's what this horse prefers. Um, should should be able to hold the speed with the other two. Probably go three deep in here on my pick five um, and use those three. Um, I just think th those three are, are, are really great horses in this race, and I think this is going to be a great race between those three. Um, so those are the three that I'm definitely using. Long shot picks here. You can go to the outside and use either number 11 or 12, but I went with number 11 with John Velasquez for Richard Baltus. Three and one lifetime. A little bit lighter race horse coming in. Um, got beat out um, in the Lexington grade three last time out going a mile and a 16th. So again, cutting back in a little bit of distance to see if that's where this horse fits. Um, so we'll we'll be able to see if that horse can can go the cut back if that helps it out maybe with a decent price. Going on to race nine, the American Turf Stakes presented by Derby City. Uh, grade two going a mile and a sixteenth. My topping top pick in here is going to be Annex for Arad Ortiz and Will Mott. Undefeated so far in his three-year-old uh, three-year-old career, um, won the Cutler Bay hundred thousand dollar stakes last time out at Gulfstream Park, a mile on the turf. Won the Palm Beach Stakes at Gulfstream Park, going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. So has that extra distance stretching out if needed, and has the mile under its belt as well. Um, so definitely seems to be one that's got the class, has decent speed figures with an 85 career best speed figure. Um, so I think that's why I use her as my top pick, or used him as my top pick, just because of the speed alone on the horse. And, hey, it's undefeated. Nothing wrong with being undefeated coming into a, to a decent stakes race. <laughs> Whoa. My top pick is going to be number 14, Palazzi, for Tyler Gaffleon and Mark Cassie. 8-2 and two lifetime. Uh, finished second last time out in the Transylvania. Was beat out by Scarlet Sky, who is my second pick. Just above number 13 for Joel Rosario and Claude McGahee. 7-3-3 three and three lifetime. Uh, won the Transylvania last time out. Like I said, beat Palazzi, who is my long shot play. Um, and also finished second to Annex in the Palm Beach Springs, or the Palm Beach Stakes. Um, so kind of these three have kind of ran together. Be interesting to see who's going to come out on top. I do think it's going to be Scarlet Sky or Annex in here. Um, I just think that the class is there, the speed is there, and the, the, these horses have really good connections that it's going to make it difficult for them to be beaten. Going on, we got race 10. The Churchill Down Stakes, seven furlongs. On the dirt, a grade one for 500000 for four-year-olds and up. This is where you have number one, Fat Man for with Javier Castellano. You got number two, Mind Control with Arad Ortiz. I mean, a great, great betting race. I mean, a great competitive race, nonetheless. Just a great full card on Kentucky Derby Day. Um, you have my second pick in here, Flagstaff, 3-1 to one on the morning line for Luis Saez and John Sadler. 18-6 and six lifetime. Has ran against present company in here with Whitmore and attachment rate. Um, has some decent speed figures at 97 career best that it posted back in August um, in the Pat O'Brien grade two. Um, so one that's in good form coming in. <clears throat> um, but however, it's, it's ran against some tough company, uh, CZ Rocket, Whitmore. So, so we'll see what it could do. See if there's something else up the sleeve of uh, John Sadler here to see what he can work around for a good trip. My third pick is going to be Tap It to Win with Johnny V and Mark Cassie. 10 forward and 2 lifetime. Uh, finished first last time out in the sprint stakes at Tampa. Um, posting a 94 speed figure, which was second best compared to what it ran back in June um, in an allowance race. So maybe maybe the source has something special, kind of finding its, its stride here, um, kicking off 2021 20, season. And my topic is a little bit out towards the outside here. I'm going with Whitmore. 
I just think the horse has had two tough bat, bad breaks. I'm getting beat by CZ Rocket. CZ Rocket's not in here. So hopefully Whitmore can come in here as an eight-year-old and say, hey, I still got it. This is what I have. Um, and it can show these other horses like Flagstaff and Mind Control and Lexitonian that it is the top old man of the barn still. Um, just, just like I said, just two great back-to-back -back races, finishing second, 97 speed figures. If it can get back to that 104 that it posted in the Breeders' Cup Sprint, Whitmore is going to be tough to beat in here for race 10. And you have my long shot number 12 uh, endorsed for Joel Rosario and Wilmot. Again, another horse that's ran with present company. Second to Fat Man. Um, third attachment rate last time out. Another older horse um, from Indaglia di Oro. Coming in just saying, hey, I'm still here. I can still race, so let's see what happens. But it's been a minute since this horse has done something in a grade stakes race. But possibly to use underneath for a decent price. A horse that seems to know how to finish in the money. Possibly the second best betting race on the card right there. In race 11 compared to the Kentucky Derby in my opinion. Moving on, you have race 11 going a mile and an eighth on the turf. The Old Forester Bourbon Turf Classic. Cheers to some bourbon. My long shot pick in here is going to be number two. Count again with Luis Saez for Phil D'Amato. Um, I, I mainly chose this horse. It's been running decent in some, in some graded stakes races. Um, basically this grade one at Santa Anita and this grade two, the Seabiscuit, um, at Del Mar, finishing first and third in there, beating out by some present company. Um, I just I just think the horse looks to be a decent price in here with some of the other picks that I'm going with. Um, like my top pick, Colonel Liam, as my top pick, won the last three 99 speed figures in the past two races with a Rad Ortiz for Todd Pletcher. A great, great turf, turf horse running right now. Horse is in an exceptional form. Um, and I can't believe the horse is three to one right now um, as the morning line. Um, I'm also going to use number five, domestic spending with Flavion Pratt for Chad Brown. Five and four lifetime, so one pass two times out. However, Arad Ortiz was on that, who is now on Colonel Liam. So that would be interesting to see how Flavion's going to handle this horse. Um, I don't think he'll have any issues um, coming in. The horse, is, the horse is in great form. Um, with that 96 speed figure the last time out in the Holiday Derby at Del Mar. Um, and then I'm going to use number six, Digital Aid for Javier Castellano and Chad Brown, 12 and 5 lifetime. Two big 105s and 103 speed figures in the Turf Classic and an optional claiming $80,000 two times back. Um, kind of has that familiarity with the Churchill Turf. Um, so that is going to bode well for Digital Aid here. Um, running back in September in the Turf Classic. Um, finishing first, kind of holding up, defending his honor here to see if he can get back-to-back -back wins. Um, watch out for seven smooth like straight for Umberto Rispoli. Um, one to wager on if you have that extra bankroll to throw in on your pick fours and pick fives. Along with ride, a comment number nine for Tyler Gaffleone. And here we are capping it off with race 12, the Kentucky Derby. Presented by Woodford Reserve. We're going a mile and a quarter here for $3 million. The race of all races, the Super Bowl of horse racing, if you would. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go down to my top pick in here. Make sure to leave a comment on your top pick for the Kentucky Derby. Um, and make sure to subscribe and like the video. My third pick is going to be Midnight Bourbon. Um, I got bourbon and horse racing, so I'm going with Midnight Bourbon as my as my third pick. Probably more or less my long shot pick um, to get some price. So I'll probably do a decent size win play show bet um, on that horse. And I think the winner of the Kentucky Derby is easily going to come from stall 14 or 15. Um, you have Rock Your World, winner of the Santa Anita Derby. Um, undefeated, coming in off the grass, trying the dirt here again. Sorry about that, horse racing fans. We have some storms coming through the Louisville slash Indiana area, so 
<laughs> my, my, my power went out and it killed my video. So I was on the Kentucky Derby giving you my top two selections in here. In, uh, number 14, Essential Quality. And 15, Rocky World. I think it's going to be a great race between these two. Um, I think they're going to be the obvious two betting choices as well. Uh, essential quality coming in undefeated, winning that Breeders' Cup Juvenile and Breeders' Cup Futurity. So it kind of has that hanging over its head as the that two-year-old curse winning those races. Um, and then Rock Your World coming off of two wins off the grass and then trying the Santa Anita for the first time um, and doing well there and, and winning and getting him enough points to get to the uh, Kentucky Derby. Joel Rosario is going to get the board here, who has been on the horse before breaking its maiden. Uh, with John Sadler, so um, definitely two that are going to be considered. That will probably be, like I said, uh, the the one and the two uh, betting choices. Um, so if that's your if that's your angle, if you go for those fast horses um, that are usually the top picks, as usually the favorites do, do well in the Kentucky Derby. Um, there's your two that kind of fit the bill and that kind of fit the statistics from the past winners as well but coming in off of stakes wins undefeated and overall connections um like i said my third pick or kind of long shot pick is going to be midnight bourbon because hey uh bourbon and horse racing got to drink the bourbon so going with midnight bourbon here at 20 to 1 with mike smith aboard uh first time mike gets this mount with uh for steve here, uh, the horse was beat out last time by Hot Rod Charlie, uh, but the horse just seems to finish in the money. Seven starts, two wins, two seconds, three thirds, um, and has basically ran in every Kentucky Derby prep, it seems like. The Iroquois, the Champagne, the Lecomont, the Risen, and the Louisiana Derby. Um, looks like it's getting better if you look at some of the speed figures. I know the distance has changed over that course, um, but definitely one that seems to maybe enjoy going a little bit longer than a mile um if you would and i just think it's all going to set up on the pace scenario is this horse going to go out to the front is he going to press the pace is he going to set just off the pace uh, that's going to be interesting to see what mike smith and steve is talk about and what they decide um to do on that angle if they're going to try something a little bit different um coming in um, another betting choice that's going to be highly uh, popular is going to be hot rod charlie I'm kind of going to steer away from this one just a little bit. I'll watch to see what kind of money goes on it. Um, but I have some likes elsewhere. Um, I have a long shot here in Medina Spirit, but I don't think it'll be a long shot come post time with Bob Baffert as the trainer. John Velasquez getting the mount. Um, the horse was beat by Rocky World last out at the, in the Santana Derby. Who Medina was favorited in this race um, after life is good. Kind of pulled up off of the Kentucky Derby Trail. Um, kind of leaving the door open for Medina Spirit to kind of take over the California Kentucky Derby points, if you would. Um, but kind of fell short there, getting beat out by Rocky World. So I think, I mean, I hate to leave Bob Baffert off of any of my Kentucky Derby tickets. Um, say what you will about him, but he knows when to get a horse primed for the right time. So kind of consider that one if you have to, um, just by the connections alone. Um, but there's a lot of good prices in here and it's the Kentucky Derby. Anything can go. So looking for another price horse, um, you know, you have keep me in mind who's coming off of a bluegrass fifth place victory. Not really strong. One that you don't know much about that is Brooklyn strong getting the boot. There was Foley on the mound from rock your world. So that one could be a decent spoiler at a big price. Um, I was going to go number one here, known agenda with Arad and Pletcher, but that one hole kind of worries me. However, we know there's the new Kentucky Derby gate being moved out a little bit. Um, so that might not even be an issue. Winner of the Florida Derby, so that's always a Kentucky Derby plus there. Seeing that, um, but kind of struggled in the Sam Davis and the, and the Remsen Stakes um, back in Tampa and Aqueduct. Got beat out by Candyman Rocket and that one that I had a big question mark about, Brooklyn Strong. Um, that one kind of seems one that nobody's going to talk about and one horse that could always do something crazy at a big price. I posted on my Twitter today that I thought there would be a horse in the top three that would be 60 to one or better odds. And Brooklyn strong may be that horse that could fit that bill. So kind of watch the odds on Brooklyn strong. 
Um, if you kind of go in and understand the workouts and stuff and you've been watching the workouts, see this horse workout. I believe it just arrived not too long ago. Um, maybe earlier this week, Monday or Tuesday. Um, so one to consider if you're a win place bet kind of better. Um, but I'm probably going to use on the outside as another long shot to just kind of build up a deeper trifecta or maybe even try a big super um, is going to be King Fury. Um, and what caught my eye about King Fury, uh, winning the Lexington last time out at a big price at 18 to 1, um, kind of ran behind essential quality, keep me in mind, um, a couple of times. Um, but what, what, what I was intrigued about was this purchase price of 950000 Maybe the horse doesn't like this mile and 16th. Um, it's been running a mile and the 16th forever. Not sure if the extra distance is going to help. Um, so this may be a horse that when it cuts back in distance, that'll be one that you need to watch out for. Um, but just, I just thought, you know, it's out of curling um, and smart strike. Um, that big price tag where it was purchased kind of just threw me off. And, and, and maybe this horse is sitting on a big race for Kenneth McPeak. Um, so you, you never know. I mean, it, it posted its career best speed figure the last time out. Probably going to be a little bit higher than 20 to 1. Looking at 30, maybe 40 to 1 for King Fury. <clears throat> so definitely one that I'm going to consider. Um, just with just with that last race in the Lexington. Um, running against essential, essential quality in the past. Um, and maybe trying to figure out what else is it going to do. Is it going to come from closing? Is it going to sit mid-pack? Where is Brian Hernandez going to fit this horse at? And that does it for the Kentucky Derby card. Um, and, the, and basically the, the, the cap off that pick five that, that concludes with the Kentucky Derby. Um, I gave you my top two selections and kind of my third pick with Midnight Bourbon. As I have bourbon and horse racing in the name of my handicapping betting guide service. Um, so that's kind of going to be my long shot play with um, a little bit of King Fury. And maybe watch out for Brooklyn Strong, that unknown horse that's kind of not getting much attention. Um, could be in there for that price that we discussed at a big tag. So you never know. It's Kentucky Derby Day. It's Kentucky Derby Week. So thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave a comment on who your pick is for the Kentucky Derby. Um, and we'll see who makes the most money out of this. So. Hopefully you follow along. The betting guide will be attached shortly to the video. Um, so just make sure to check that out. Um, and check out bourbonandhorseracing.com for all of our racing action all year long, not just including the Kentucky Derby. Cheers.